So tonight I am going to talk a little bit about exercising while pregnant, some food for thought or considerations to keep in mind as you're exercising while you're pregnant. Because there's a lot of questions on when to scale, how to scale, how much to scale, and what what really is okay and what really isn't okay. And the answer is there isn't there isn't a lot of direct answers. Rather, there's pros and there's cons and there's things to think about and consider. Um, but I'm not here to say do this or don't do that. I'm just raising some things or just mentioning some things you may want to consider while you're continuing to CrossFit specifically or exercise just in general as you're pregnant. So in the first trimester, there's not a lot of specific changes other than you may feel like crap, but there's not a lot of exercise really contraindications or don't do this or maybe you shouldn't do that. The second trimester is when things really start to kind of shift and maybe you should start making some modifications. And then in the third trimester, that's really when you're gonna to wanna to make those modifications and that's when your body is gonna almost force you to make those modifications. It's, it's going to not like it or not let you do things that you previously could do without a problem. So I have three things to kind of think about and the first one is in regards to box jumps. So it may be a good idea once you hit that second trimester, I would suggest potentially, um, to switch a box jump to maybe a box step up. And the reason being is when you jump and you land on that box, you're adding a lot of pressure to your pelvic floor. And your pelvic floor is already getting more pressure from a baby growing inside of you, a placenta that's also growing inside of you, and just extra weight in general from increased blood flow and a whole bunch of other stuff. There's more pressure on that. So switching and to box step ups will decrease that impact and it'll decrease that pressure on the pelvic floor and that can help you tolerate exercises like box jumps better if you're having an issue with them. Some women may have some incontinence or some feelings of heaviness or just uncomfortableness and sometimes switching the jumps to the step ups can make a world of difference there. Another thing to consider is barbell path. So with cleans and snatches, you're actually making contact with the body. However, the first trimester, um, usually, so from what I've t talked with, with people who are fairly um, competitive power lifters or uh, Olympic lifters, they will make contact with that bar um, in the first trimester. And that it's okay because the baby sits far enough back in the stomach or the abdomen that you're not going to have issues. You're not going to damage said baby. However, when you start to get to second trimester or third trimester and baby is growing and your abdomen is growing, then that's not a good idea to make contact. You may be able to do cleans a little bit longer into your pregnancy simply because the contact point is on the upper thigh and it's not on your stomach or your abdomen. One thing too though to consider is that if you continue to do cleans or snatches and you can do no contact cleans and no contact snatches to avoid that impact if you're concerned about baby or if your belly is growing a lot, if you repeatedly move in a certain way to move that bar around your stomach and you do that for four or five months, you may develop altered bar mechanics or bar path um, bar paths that you may have to then change when you're no longer pregnant. And that can be really, really difficult to change an ingrained habit. So maybe doing something where you clean for a certain amount of time, but once you're really altering that bar path and that bar is getting far further away from your body, maybe not doing that and just holding and waiting and doing squats or a modified deadlift or a sumo deadlift instead, just until you're no longer pregnant, just so you don't learn a bad habit. So not a yes or a no, but something to consider. And the last consideration relates to kettlebell swings. So with American kettlebell swings, you're going all the way overhead. And when you go overhead, you put more pressure on the front of your abdomen. So going overhead, a little bit more there. Whereas if you go up to here, that motion there isn't as much, isn't present as much. And not that that's necessarily bad in and of itself, but when you're pregnant, you do get a diastasis recti, which is basically your abs in the front kind of pull apart and they separate a little bit, which is normal. It happens in all pregnancies. And when you're no longer pregnant, usually it comes back together. Sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes, so if you repeatedly do a lot of American kettlebell swings and you put a lot of stress on the front of your abdomen, it could potentially make it, it could be a factor in how long is it going to take for that diastasis to close when you're no longer pregnant or will it be more difficult? It's basically going overhead and having that diastasis is going to add more, is going to add increased stress 
on your abdomen compared to not going overhead. And a Russian kettlebell swing is a fairly equivalent uh, method compared to an American kettlebell swing in terms of stimulus for the majority of the, for the most part. Like you're scaling, but you're not scaling so much that you're taking the entire movement out. You're scaling a little bit. So it is a decent substitution, something to consider. Diastasis happens naturally when you're moving when you're pregnant and it's don't be afraid of it. It is, it's a thing and it happens, but maybe putting extra stress on it and exaggerating it may not be in your best interest. So those are three things for food for thought when it comes to crossfitting or exercising while you're pregnant. Um, I hope you found it informative and educational and hopefully somewhat enjoyable. Um, feel free to reach out at any time with questions or concerns and have a great night.